There's a piece of maple I got. It's a one by six by ten feet. Um, and we're going to be using it for the blade. Still figuring out a design and how I'm going to make this work. But they don't call me the random woodworker. That's why I do off the wall stuff sometimes. But let's get. Uh, Probably going to go ahead and cut this a couple of inches longer than the blade itself, which is what, 45 inches. And then I'm going to be sending it through the planer, but um, I'm going to have to design this as I go. Okay, here's my 48 inches. Now, you notice this is one long blade, so I'm going to cross cut it to 48 and then I'm going to send it through the planer, and I'm guessing the thickness. I'm going to go for 3 8 first and see what happens. It might be too thick. I can always remove a little more if I need to. All right, let's get that done. Okay, I got it to about 3 8 Next step is to run it through the joiner on both edges. And then I'm going to take it over the table saw and we're going to rip it down to 3 and a half inches. Now I can always remove more if this is too thick. Okay, so let's get this going. sides looking good so I'm gonna go ahead and take it over the table saw and rip it down just a little over three and a half inches so when I send it back through here I got about three and a half inches okay I set the fence to about three and nine sixteenths so when I send it back through the um, joiner I'll take off probably a sixteenth and I'll get a three and a half out of this so let's get this started this set up. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the point on the blade and then from there take it to the bandsaw and rough cut that out. The next step is to go ahead and um, get a both sides uh, sharpened down to a blade. You know where it's uh, well, it's going to be kind of. I'm not sure how I'm going to do this, but I got to taper both sides, all four sides. I got to taper to uh, get this on a, a sharp edge. Okay, what I did is I ran it through a 45 on the joiner uh, twice on all four corners. All right, from here I'm trying to figure, uh, I'm probably going to go ahead and design this here on the tip. time on this is the 120 and I just kept going over and using this to shape everything so I know it's uh, time-consuming but um, I think I pretty well got it the way I want it and yeah, pretty uh, pretty sharp blade too that's wow so just stay on this 120 and design it 
And um, from there, I'm going to figure out how to make the handle for it. Okay, I put the blade up to my template. This is long. I always have it longer so I can cut it off because I'm not sure where I'm going to design this handle into this yet. But I want to put up the blade to show you that it's pretty close. You know, you'll never get right on the money, but that's fine. So the next step is to figure this uh, design handle here along with this. So I'm not uh, sure. I'm thinking maybe Purple Heart for all this. But we'll see where this goes. I got the, the blade itself uh, strapped down, and this is my straight edge, which is strapped down. And I got the router bit set up so it runs right down the middle, and it'll stop here, of course, and it starts on this one. So I'm going to run a V groove down it so far. Then I'm going to turn it over and do a V groove the same length. Then I'm going to do shorter V grooves on each side. Two on this side and two on the other. All right, you see I got my uh, blade done. It's totally sanded and designed. Next step is the handle. Uh, I went and purchased uh, this wood here. It's called uh, Winji. It's from uh, Africa. It's a really dense wood. I like it because it's really black along with the grain it has in it. So this will look pretty cool on the handle. First thing I do is rip this down to uh, two and a quarter inches. First thing I rip it two and a quarter. Then I'm going to cross cut 16 inches each. That'll give me three 16 inch, pe 16 inch pieces. That'll be uh, two and a quarter wide. Then I'm going to glue those together to uh, to make this handle. Okay, I already put um, one coat of a walnut stain inside here, but it's not quite dark enough. So what I did, <clears throat> took a small narrow brush, and then I put it in the very end and I push it down and I draw it back. Okay, there, let it sit for about 20 minutes and then we'll, I'll show you how to sand off the parts that went out, outside the area. Okay, it's been about 20 minutes. I went over it again off camera and I kind of got some stuff over there to show you that it can be removed. Now I got a 150 grit. Okay. okay. <laughs> Okay, now you, you want to go over the whole entire blade like that, then take some air and blow out the... Alright, now you can fine touch it if you see something else, go back over it. Okay, that, do both sides, that completes uh, the lines of being staining the lines. Okay, the next step, I already did it, but what I did is I set the blade up to the height where I wanted to end the cut and I sent it through with the fence where I needed and then I moved the fence in just a little bit and did the other side then I just took a saw and I cut these two ends off okay now the next step if you noticed here I can't go much thinner than that because strength so the next step is to actually square these two sides off equally because this when you go and do this it does rock a little bit okay so I'll show you how that's done Okay, what I did is I took my miter box, I set the sword blade in there, and I got it uh, cross uh, tight against this fence here, then I clamped it down. Look at this end, and make sure that it's not tilted this way or this way. Remember, these are beveled, so you want to get it where it's straight, not tilted. Okay, so then I clamped it down, now everything is clamped down. From there, I'm using a hacksaw, because it's got fine teeth. And what I want to do is I want to cut, I don't know if you can see it on camera, you can see that little lip there, it's crooked. If you look straight down, it's not straight. So I want to just cut that off, leaving just a little bit of a lip here, which I want. So we just take our time.
Now I'm kind of rocking this a little bit because this is not totally this is not totally flat. This is, but this is not. So I'm barely doing it. I don't want to go very deep at all. You want to check? Okay, from there, you want to take a chisel and just barely knock out this here. And then from this point, this is straight from this end to this end. It's all straight across. Flip it over, match it up, and do the same thing. Okay, I got both sides done. Now we got a true 90 degree here on both sides. Both sides are the same, so they match up. Now this is going to be too long, which is fine. I'm going to be cutting it down, but not yet. So next step is uh, find the center of my piece of stock and so that I can drill it out to insert this. Okay, I got them uh, cross-cut at about 16 inches each. Next step is to take them over to the the planer, and I'm just going to barely plane both sides off um, six sides down, and from that point we'll glue them together. Okay, ready to glue. Like I showed on uh, some of my other videos. Uh, set your clamps up and then you want to uh, make sure that uh, you put the glue on both sides and use a brush. Don't use your fingers. Okay, spread it evenly and uh, don't put it thick. You know? Don't need it thick. If you get too much, just put it on the other piece of wood. But Okay, got them clamped. You notice I use a lot of clamps because this is, you know, two and a quarter wide. It's pretty wide so you want a lot of clamps on it so it really uh, takes clamps all the areas. Just kind of wipe the glue out a little bit. Not a, not a major deal because we have to go over later and fix some other stuff. But, um, when you're tightening these down you want to tighten them a little tighter than if you would if you're just gluing three quarter to three quarter together. Okay, This is a bigger surface so you want to tighten it down a little more. Okay, we're going to let that sit for 24 hours, at least 24 hours. While I'm waiting for this to dry for 24 hours, here's the leftover piece that I ripped off this. I'm going to go ahead and cut these uh, to 16 inch lengths. That'll give me three 16 inch lengths, uh, same as this. Not quite as wide, which is fine, because this will be the cross member on the sword. So since uh, I'm waiting for this, I'll go ahead and uh, cross cut this and then I'm going to send it through the planer and get it ready for after 24 hours I can take this off then I can glue this together. It's been 20, over 24 hours so it's time to take off the clamps. This piece here this is going to be the handle itself for the sword and we already cut these pieces out so what you want to do is uh, first thing you want to do is glue them together just like we did this piece I showed you earlier. Glue them together, put them in that clamp, clamp, the, clamp them real good and leave those at least 24 hours. Okay while the glue is drying on the other piece this is the handle. Now remember we already uh, sent this through the uh, planer and this side's through the planer. These two sides got to be squared up so first I'm going to do make sure the side is fit through the planer rest tightly against here and I'll keep sending it through until I get it smooth. Then I'll use this side flat against there and keep sending it till smooth. From there we'll take it to the table saw. Saw. This is the side you can see where the teeth marks are. I got it pretty well square, so I'm going to take the side that I threw the table saw and I'm going to go ahead and plane it down. From there, I'm going to keep playing until I actually get it two inch by two inch. Alright, got it done. Now it's uh, two inches by two inches. Next step is to uh, take it across the um, chop saw 
and cut square off the two edges and from there it's ready to put on the lathe. All right, I'm gonna cross cut just at the edge of both sides. I want as long as I can get it, so. Ready to go. Now it's time to put on the lathe and uh, I can go ahead and turn. It's a handle for the, you know, the sword. Okay, as you can see, I got this done. This is actually two inch by two inch, and it's uh, chopped off, ready to go in into the, the lathe. All right. Now this is the handle. This is going to be the cross part of the sword. So this has uh, been over 30 hours that it's set. The glue for the glue to set up. Now, we've got this piece here. Okay, we're going to run this through the jointer until we get it just like this. Uh, it's going to be a little smaller. It might be one and five eighths by one and five eighths because the cross member on the sword is smaller. So let's run this through the jointer and get this squared up. Okay, I got it down to one and seven eighths by one and seven eighths. Okay, last step is to go ahead and uh, cro cross cut it on the miter saw, then they'll both be set up ready to turn. Okay, the next step, I got the smaller of the two here. This is going to be the cross piece for the sword. If you notice, I found the very center of the center of the center. All right, I put a, <clears throat> what I did was, I <clears throat> excuse me, I uh, center punched it. Now what I'm going to do is drill a small hole all the way through for the simple fact this is the side where the blade goes. I got the measurements there. And I want the hole to come through <clears throat> because I'm going to probably have to drill a 5 8 hole here for the sword, the handle of the sword. So I want to know where the center at. So I'm going to drill right through the whole thing. All right. <clears throat> As you can see, it came through here. So the idea of that is now I don't have to line this side up when I go to put the handle on the sword. Next step, I'm going to have to change this bit out and uh, drill from this line to this line. I'm going to have to drill it out and then from there I got to chisel it out to fit the handle in there. Okay, I got it set up. If you can notice here, I got a line here and a line here. Uh, it, inside here is where the handle of the sword has to go and the handle of the sword itself because I'm removing all this later. So I only got this much, about an inch to play with. So I set this down so this stops about in the middle there. So from the other side, the handle can come through. So I'm going to be drilling across here. Now I'm going to start at this and go work away across drilling it. Now I put a little gouge across here with the chisels so the, the, um, drill bit will actually catch in there and go all the way straight across. Okay, got the holes all drilled out. Now remember this is a cross section for the sword. Um, I'm done with this for now, so the next step is to take the other piece, uh, put it in the lathe and start turning it for the handle itself. All right, it's time to turn the handle on the saw.
next step is to sand it. I got this done, I got the design. This is gonna be inserted into the cross member of the handle. These will be cut off and this will be cut off. So next thing is to sand it. took the 180, now I put a 220, so I'm going to polish it up with a 220. <laughs> Alright, this is the handle for the sword. It's pretty well done. I, I wet it down so it would puff up a little and then I'll sand it again. But I got to cut this off here. Right in that corner, cut that off. And then from this, I'll be cutting this off and throwing this on the sander and rounding this edge off. So this is the handle for the sword. Next step is to get the, the cross member done. Uh, that'll be my next step. Okay, I got this uh, chiseled out. Remember earlier I drilled it out, now I got it chiseled. And I had to sit there and cut this to length, shape this. Now if you look at it, it's gonna, uh, it's gonna go in really tight, which is good. And when I glue this, it's gonna be really strong. So, all right, next step is I'll put this on the lathe and I'm gonna turn the cross piece. This is the cross piece, if you notice, for the sword. All right, now I'm going to start turning it. Okay, got it done. Okay, there's the cross member. Now, next thing I got to do, of course, this blade goes in here. See that little tiny hole there? That's going to be drilled out three quarters of an inch, so the handle goes in that. So the next step is to thin this out, probably to maybe an inch. Right now, it's two inches. So. All right, that completes the cross section of the sword. Uh, I got to do a little more sanding on it, but it looks like we're pretty well shaped and designed here. Let me uh, take it out of here. All right, that's what we got. Here you see earlier I have the handle done and the blade is done. So from here I'm going to do a fine uh, tuning on the sanding on all of it. And then from there, I'm going to go ahead and uh, glue it and put it together. And we'll see. Yeah, I got a got a more sanding to do on this. So, all right, this is this part is completed. Okay, what I did was I went and cut off both ends of the handle itself, and then I put it in the cross member here and glued it and let it sit overnight so it could uh, uh, harden up. Then the second step is. The blade itself, I shaped the inside part that was going to slide in, or I shaped it till it fit in real good, and it was square and level. Now this has already been glued in too, so the whole setup has been uh, set over 24 hours, so uh, it's ready to go. Now the final step is to go over the whole thing with a 400 grit sandpaper, and from there we're going to uh, put tongue oil on it. Well, I want to hang the sword up. Uh, this is my final drawing, which you can see is not, it didn't come out exactly the same. Um, you notice I made these 
too long, so I shorten that, and the handle I shorten a little bit. The blade's just a little bit longer, but um, I already sanded this with a 400. It is ready now to put the tongue oil on it, so I'm going to do that next. All right, it's time to put the tongue oil on. Gonna put it on real generous, and you also want to rub it in real good. Now notice that's turning pretty dark. This wood is turning pretty dark, so that's cool. Okay, this uh, dried overnight, the first coat of uh, tug oil. All right, I did, uh, went over the whole entire thing with the steel wool. Uh, I took my compressor and blew it all down. It's ready for its second coat. So we can put it on a uh, little thinner because it's already got the first primer coat on it. So just want to, like I said, rub it in again. But don't put it in a stick this time. All right, do the entire sword this way. Okay, the sword has its uh, final coat of uh, tongue oil on it. I'm gonna let this dry overnight, and then from that point, it's ready to go. It's completed.